Hi everyone, welcome to the 5G non-standalone optimization training. Um, if you remember, in the previous session, we covered around six sessions, which was covering those highlighted, which is related to accessibility, retainability, mobility, and some uh, actions impacting uh, the traffic and so on. And also, we covered part of the 5G NSA or non-standalone cell design. <laughs> you can find the playlist of uh, the 5G non-standalone training in the, in the top right here link. Uh, in today's session, we are going to continue with the uh, 5G NSA uh, cell design, where we covered all the below highlighted points. But in today's session, we are going to cover the remaining parts, which is related to BCI planning, neighbor planning, and tag planning, and also for the uh, for the downlink transmit power. What is the consideration? What how to calculate and how to do this and that, and also for P rash planning. This session might be uh, uh, split into two sessions, uh, just to uh, make sure it's not very long for both tests. So let's move forward. Just to, before moving forward, but just to recall, this is like, uh, was our diagram. So like, which is showing the impact of the cell design, which, uh, what kind of impact can, what kind of cell design can impact our throughput and so on. So today's session actually is, will be focusing, starting with the neighbor planning and the PCI planning. I would like to, uh, to highlight that usually about the tag planning for 5G non standalone, this doesn't doesn't require anything from your side. Uh, like as, as we as we mentioned, like for the tag planning, usually if you look into this figure, it's just follow the existing 4G network. This is usually 5G non standalone. In 5G standalone, it, you might also reuse whatever you have in 5G standalone. But uh, it, it might have a different consideration. But for the meantime, for 5G non-standalone, non just follow the 4G part. So let's move forward uh, so to see, to cover those highlight points and start first with the PCI and neighbor planning. Okay, the, the first part I would like to cover first, it would relate to 5G neighbors planning. Actually, there is a different categories of neighbor planning relations. If you already have some experience in, in the, even 4G or 5G network, this should be very easy for you to understand. But here I just try to classify it into 5G non-standalone and the left figure as you can see here, and 5G standalone. Just to give you a brief about what kind of neighbors relation required for both of them and what kind of, of events and so on. So first of all, I, I was just to highlight that in general uh, for the neighbor planning, it's more required for the the, the handover because usually for the cell specific neighbors definition usually are not required for the series selection unless actually it's necessary to either blacklist a, a specific cell or apply a measurement power offset to a specific cell like applying a measurement power, power, power offset means that for example you can from during the the uh, series selection or the initial access of the UE, you can just make some cells more attractive to this UE or less attractive during tuning some of the reselection thresholds. But at the end, uh, the neighbor's definition is not really required for uh, for the selection in general. This is the first point. Second point, in 5G non standalone general, we don't have this the concept of, five, of, of series selection. Series selection in general is controlled by the 4G network. We don't have a series selection of 5G in a standard room. It's mainly controlled by the normal legacy of the selection 5G. So the first point, again, to recall it, like we don't really require the definition of the neighbors for the, the series selection unless it's mainly used or needed for a specific, uh, a specific scenario. Uh, just also to recall that in, in 4G, we used to have a different SEP system information broadcast just to, to transfer this kind of information about the series selection starting from SEP3 for interfrequency and you have SEP4 and SEP5 which is used for interfrequency and interact uh, measurement which can use to broadcast those uh, neighbors if defined and also to bro broadcast especially for 4 and 5 to broadcast the interfrequency and also, for example, if you are moving from one frequency within the 5G to another, interfrequency or even uh, inter uh, rat. For example, if you are moving from to different rat, for example. So uh, here, uh, and, and one more important point that usually in, in later on, in from reselection from 4G to 5G standalone, this is will require you to have the SEP24, which is will be uh, required to be enabled in the network in general, and. Uh, just like as the bell, bell the 3gpp uh, the current release actually it was supposed to be the release 15 but what i i know from the network or from practical experience that you don't have this kind of uh, series selection, selection or handover if you are speaking about if you are speaking about 5g standalone moving from 5g uh, to uh, 3g or 2g it's just allowed from 5g towards the 4g 
but we don't have from 5G to 3 and 2G. Uh, anyway, so now let's just cover uh, what we have about the neighbors in general. The, the, the figure in the left just summarizing all the type of neighbor definition you need to consider during planning the 5G standalone network. So, for example, if you look into this figure, you have here the inode B, which is a 4G part, you have another inode B. And you have the genet B and another genet B here. Assuming this move, user is moving from here till he re reaches into this point. So the first part, for example, within the 4G network, this he's moving. So he can make from one 4G node to another. He can make either intra frequency or enter, enter or in, enter or intra frequency handover. And this is actually usually being defined by default, especially if you are just like building a 5G non standalone network. So I suppose that this one's supposed to be optimized, but again. This is still very important to make sure that it's correctly uh, defined and have no issues or problems because again this can cause a problem in in uh, in 5G non standalone. So here usually the interfer frequency is using event A3 and inter frequency is using either A4 or A5 uh, A5 events as as mentioned here. And here is the formula for the A3 just for your reference and also for A5 here. Those is usually the formula which is being used by both of them. In A5, A3 is just based on offset. You just give offset differences between the surveying neighbors. For example, if the neighbor is better than the offset by 3 dB, 4 dB, 5 dB, based on whatever the value will give and achieve for a specific time to trigger, then the handover will start triggering. A5 event is the most common use now, more than the A4. A5 event just having a two condition, usually called threshold one, threshold two, where the measurement here, as you can see, plus the hysteresis uh, for the serving, serving cell, supposed to be less than threshold one. So this is the first condition. And another condition must be achieved in order to the user to move to the neighbor cell. So first, there is a condition the serving. Serving should be worse than a particular th threshold where you define it in your configuration. Then the neighbors should be great with the neighbor or the target or the candidate neighbors should be better than a, a threshold two, which is also configured value in the network. And also hysteresis and others are being configured. So this is the A5 event. Now, the, the most important, once you, you latch to this inut B, uh, which is having a co-located, for example, site, uh, B5, uh, 5G non standalone site, and now it, the UE required now, and the UE is capable 5G, and UE is uh, supposed that he's here now, or he's here. So he's supposed now to start measuring the related frequency and related uh, uh, information about the 5G network in, in order to start latch or attach to 5G network. How this, how this can be done? Uh, inut D will deliver something called event P1 and time to trade and so on. And based on this, the, once the UE received event P1, it will start measuring the, the, the frequency which is being sent from the inut B to the UE in our serial configuration message. Start measuring until he found the specific neighbor. So he report the B1 event. For example, if the B1 event as shown in this formula is here, one for, uh, for B1 event, if, if the UE reported, for example, that uh, the RSRP of the unit B is achieving the event P1 threshold for this particular time to trigger. So then he will report the measurement report. Then they will start in this process, which we discussed in details in the previous session. You can even uh, refer to the accessibility bar. This will be covering that decision condition will be added. Once the user attached to unit B, assuming that he moved within the same site from one cell to another or from another site, this will trigger something called DSL, DSL change like a primary secondary cell change for example it's changing the secondary cell of the unit b to another one so this is usually used uh, if intra frequency handover it will be using a3 if inter frequency handover it will be used a5 and the good point here that a3 and a5 is exactly the same as whatever you used to have in the 4g as as a concept or conceptual uh, point of view and just uh, an ad hoc or additional point here usually the ANR can be used to populate a set of neighbor relation. Usually the NR can be used in a non-standalone network, but it's depend because actually the main idea that enabling the ANR auto automatic neighbor relation, which is some feature in 5G non-standalone, this is actually require, requires activating something called SEB1, which is system information broadcast one. Because at the end, the, the user needs to uh, read the CGI and report the, CG, the CGI to the 
to the inner B or to the genu B until he like to be able to help the the, the inner B or the genu B to add the, the required neighbors definition. And in general, step one uh, step one is ma mandatory or must in 5G standalone, but it's not required in non-standalone. Uh, so again, if step one uh, is not enabled, this is uh, even if you enable the NR, probably it will not be work unless the your vendor, for example, have another uh, specific solution. For example, some can be used only if assuming the X2 relations being defined. So this is, can be added. But in general, as a concept, if NR is not uh, is used without sub one enabling sub one in 5G net standalone, this means it will not be working. And also, I have a video explaining this part. We can refer to this video in my channel. Um, just here to quickly uh, recap, uh, the 5G standalone uh, neighbors, or just to quickly summarize, in other words, 5G standalone neighbors actually it's very simple compared to non standalone. Like as you can see here, we have just the E node B to G node B. This is required IRAT even re release with direction or handover, and this is based on event B1 and sometimes can be B2 as well. And from G node B to G node B, just require the normal intra frequency or inter frequency handover, which is used event A3 and A5. It's more simplified because we don't have this section where we need to have this kind of additional between 4G and 4G and so on. So it's mainly um, like the normal legacy, for example, if you mention as 4G, it will be something like 4G if you replace E node B with 3G and G node B with 5G. So in general, you have here is selection or, or handover, uh, sorry, reuse direction or handover from 4G to 5G. Then you have intra, intra, or intra frequency. This is a majority of what we need to cover about the neighbors definition. So now let's me jump to the next section. Here uh, for this section, it's about the 5G PCI planning. I just try, try to summarize the main consideration which we usually consider or main requirement whenever we start the PCI plan. But let me stress on one point. Uh, to be honest about especially the, the PCI planning and neighbors is also required to be uh, giving a very special uh, focus. But especially with PCI planning, we have a tools to do that. We have a tools, but we need still to understand whatever you have because even the tools is doing the planning and so on. Still, you will find many problems in the network. So you need to understand the basic background about what kind of problems you might face to be able even to troubleshoot or improve the network. So just 5G in general introduced extra PCI compared to the 4G. It's almost double, as you can see, it's double. Before in 4G, we used to have 504 PCI. Now in NR, we have 1008 PCI. As you can see, it was both of them is group of three, but now we have 330, 336 compared to, to the 4G. And in 3G, before, we used to use this kind of scrambling code. So the main consideration, the most important, the most important what the consideration more than anything else, it's about the BCI conflict, which is can categorized into collision or confusion free. Like I will explain this part in details, but just as, as mentioned here in, in summary, the collision means that you have two sites neighbor to each other and they're using the same BCI. Very easy one. Like both of them have been same BCI. We'll explain this one in more details next slide. And confusion, for example, you have one serving cell with two neighbors, both neighbors using the same PCI. So the, the, the serving would be confused. This PCI is related to which neighbor. So this is, might lead into a problems in general and handle. And we have this PC, PCI mod uh, 3 and 4 and 30 uh, planning concepts in the 5G. Uh, before uh, in, in 4G, it was mainly about 3 and, and 30 where we have this three being mainly used in synchronization signals, which is in the second SSS and BSS and so on. Usually, usually that's BSSS, primary synchronization signals. And we have BCI mode 4 is used for downlink frequency signal, usually for the DM race for the broadcast channel. I'll go through all of that. And we have mode 30, which is exactly the same as whatever we used to have in 4G, which is about the uplink DM uh, reference signal. And one important point that you just need to understand or keep it in your mind. Whenever you go to any network, you'll find mostly, all the time, most of the time, they are reserving some of the, the of the PCIs. For example, they will not consider the complete 1008 PCIs during the planning or during designing the PCI. They will reserve, for example, 200 or 300 PCI, let's say from 700 to 1008 for the future use. In case if you have additional expansion, we have you need to make some femtocells, microcells, whatever. So this is, can be considered for future use. 
to be only used by those particular cells. So usually you will know, you will see that not all BCIs are being used. And this is something uh, like common between most of the operators. And again, so the, the main consideration also, you need to uh, make a uh, shoot that plan to maximize the reuse distance as much as you can to just avoid having the same BCI uh, for the nearby, nearby sites. And yeah, and this is required in order to uh, never to allow the user never to be able to receive the same BCI from different, for example, frequencies and uh, so on. So now let's move forward about the more concept about the BCI. Uh, the first part here I'm going to cover about the BCI planning for mode three and mode uh, four and, and, and 30 planning, just quickly to uh, recap. This is again, it's very similar to the 4G, but the main difference is that in 4G, everything was being done based on the uh, cell specific reference signal where uh, even your your quality or CQI it was being estimated by that so that the, the interference or mode 3 was kind of more crucial more critical to compare to 4G because everything was based on on, uh, on the uh, evaluation based on this uh, cell uh, cell specific reference signal okay so this means that in, in, in 4G it was very important to have this kind of very like as as much as you can uh, to reduce the scattering interference in 4G this is like, for example, mod 3, as you can see here, it's mainly based on the subconscious signals, which is uh, particularly for about the BSSS. Okay, as you know, the BSS has, has three groups. So this BSS indicates the BCI was in group uh, one, two, three. So this is uh, this is means that you have three, right? So this means now it creates the rule that to have like this kind of mod 3 interference. So for example, each cell will have a different mod, for example, BCI one, two, three, so each one will have a different mod. So to avoid within the site or even try to do it with the neighbor cells to avoid this kind of, uh, of mod three interference. And as mentioned here, for example, this is based on some simulations, and this is quoted from 5G and R in bullets, uh, based on some simulation that if you have this kind of mod three interference, so this is can make the cell acquisition like during the initial access to uh, the time itself to increase so if in case if the user receive the same pss uh, with the same mode from different the different multiple cells so this is about the first thing about mode 3 for the dmrs broadcast dmrs as you know that uh, we also covered the dmrs part in, in uh, the detailed section you can refer to the channel for this video but as you know that in general uh, the distribution of the dmrs within the broadcast channel which is uh, here this one which is like every like every fourth as you can see uh, sub uh, sub carrier so you can for example here the first one you have the second third fourth and so on so you can see for example bci zero require to have the, uh, the first here uh, the first one and then the broadcast will have a dmrs then it will again coming here uh, BCI1 should be the planning coming here and BCI3 should come here and so on. So uh, uh, in general, the DMRS of broadcast used to estimate the channel propagation uh, by the broadcast. And this is actually information is also very important. And usually this is, uh, as, as you mentioned, the DMRS is allocated usually if every fourth uh, resource element. So it's good to have it in this kind of design since it's allocated every fourth. So it's, it's using BCI mod four. So as you can see here, for example, uh, if it's uh, BCI zero here, BCI one here, and 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 so on. And just quick point to highlight that in case if you have a BTS being allocated with a BCI group, as you can see here, with with three, like for example, and three consecutive BCIs, and shown here. So this will directly lead that both B BCI mode three and four will be satisfied within the same BTS. So it's safe in case if you have it this kind of consecutive BCI allocation. So this will achieve both modes together. And again, this is, will be done by the tools. Uh, okay, so just uh, here, the last one that's about the uplink reference signal, just to quickly recap uh, something here, I would like to show how the figure looks like in the in the frame. Again, again, here you have the SSP, as you mentioned that for the SSS required, BSSS surely required monthly, uh, mode 3 planning and the broadcast required mode 4 planning and now we're speaking about the DMRS which is located here as you can see in this location and this is required actually a mode 30. So uh, just again uh, the uplink require a mode 30 planning and usually the uh, mode 30 planning F3 is being already designed so this one also will be achieved so we, we don't really like worry much about it because it will be already covered within the initial planning for and using the tool and so on. So let's move forward now for the next.
Okay, the last part here, it's one of the very basics, I think. Uh, we need to, to quickly cover about it. It's about the type of the BCI conflict, which is having two types, BCI collision and confusion. As you can see, the figure in the top right here, this is covering the BCI uh, collision, where we have cell one and cell two. Both are operating within the same frequency, for sure, same frequency. And for example, both of them are using PCI one, PCI one. So this is the user will have a conflict. You will not understand uh, in the measurement, you will not understand anything about that because two cells are having a conflict. So in this case, this will lead into a, a mutual signal interference uh, overlapping, and the UE will fail to decode or correctly decode the signal because of this conflict. So this will increase actually the surface the operate and even the handover would be impacted and so on. And this is usually if you have, uh, that's why they have this concept of free use distance. You need to have a higher use distance for the BCIs. And the second concept is about the BCI confusion. As you can see, this is a serving uh, cell one and you have uh, cell two here. This is a typo and you have cell three here. So the, the cell, the neighbor cells with cell two and cell three is being used the same frequency with the same BCI, which is BCI one. So once a user moves, for example, and starts reporting the BCI to the, the serving unit B, the, the unit B cannot, in this case, cannot determine that the, the neighboring cell is for which which frequency that you has measured based on the reported BCIs. So therefore, it cannot understand because both are being understand, are being configured within the cell. So it will not understand this is related to which um, which cell, either cell two or cell three. So this will make a confusion. So in this case, case, the performance cannot be done. The handover cannot be done in this case. Uh, in some cases, this can be mitigated if you have the SOM feature being enabled in the network, like in this SOM feature, in this case, the they will instruct, the unit B will instruct the UE to start uh, reading the CGI uh, for those two cells and report it, uh, report it back to be able to make the handover. So in case of the NR is being enabled and the user supporting the CGI, so in this case, the handover can can work easily uh, with for sure some impact. But the best case to try to avoid this scenario where you have the serving or any site in the network configured with two neighbors, nearby neighbors with the same BCI to avoid this kind of BCI confusion scenario. Um, and th this is what we are going to cover today. Let me uh, just explain quickly. Um, OK, this is what we're going to cover next, that power, the 5G downlink transmit power. We'll try to cover very important concepts and also the calculation and try to cover to make you understand really how the power can be calculated, what it means by EIRP, which is effective isotropic radiated power, what is mean by EPR, EPRE, energy per resource element, and many other stuff. This is to make it very clear to you about the, all the concepts about the power, what is the relation between how to calculate something called cell reference power, what is the relation with other channels, for example, the CSIRS, BDCH, SSP and so on. This kind of all things will be covered in, in the separate section because it might take some time. So, um, and this is also some of the whatever we're going to cover in next slide, in next uh, session. So just uh, stay tuned for the next session about the downlink transmit power of cell power design. And if you please, if you like the video, to share it and to click like, uh, like and to spread the noise. Thank you very much and see you next video.